In the yesteryears of centuries ago, in a small portion of this vast world of ours, there lived a people called the children of Israel. From them came certain men and women through whom God revealed himself to all mankind. One of these was Ruth, a faithful woman. For ten years, Naomi, an Israelite from Judea, had lived in the land of Moab. She had come to this land with her husband, Elimelech, and their two sons because of a famine in Judea. Not long after their arrival, Elimelech had died. Then her sons had married two young women of Moab, Orpah and Ruth. Not long after their marriage, Naomi's two sons also had died. And now she was preparing to return to Judea because she had heard that the Lord was again giving her people plenty of food and she wanted to be back in her homeland. Ruth and Orpah planned to go along with Naomi for both girls loved their mother-in-law. She had always been kind to them and had taught them to worship the true God instead of the idols of the Moabites. So the three of them got ready for the journey to Bethlehem. But before they had gone very far, Naomi came to a decision. Why should her daughters-in-law leave their own country? Perhaps the people in Bethlehem would not welcome them, being widows and foreigners. And so, Naomi spoke to them. Please go back, both of you, to your own homes. And may the Lord be kind to you as you were to the dead and to me. And may he give each of you a good home. No. We're going with you to your people. <laughs> go back, my daughters. Why should you go with me? Do I have any more sons who could marry you? And even if I should marry again and have sons, would you wait for them to grow up? No. No. I'm sorry that the Lord has sent me all this trouble. Your sister-in-law is going back to her people. Go with her. Don't ask me to leave you. Wherever you go, I want to go. And where you stay, I want to stay. Your people shall be my people. And your God, my God. I want to die where you die. And there I'll be buried. May the Lord punish me if I let anything but death come between us. When Naomi realized how deeply Ruth loved her, she thanked God for having given her such a loyal daughter to help make up for the loss of her husband and two sons. So Ruth and Naomi continued on their journey. When the women came to the land of Canaan, Naomi was glad to be back in her homeland again. This is the country which the eternal God promised to Abraham and his descendants. It's now my country too.
Naomi had changed in the 10 years she had been away from Bethlehem. But when she came to the well outside the village, some of her old friends recognized her and greeted her warmly. Is this really Naomi, the pleasant one? Do not call me the pleasant one. Call me Mara, the bitter one, for I have a bitter sorrow. My husband and my sons are dead. But Ruth, my son's wife, has chosen to come here with me, for she worships the God of Israel. Naomi's friends welcomed Ruth, somewhat coldly at first, but soon she would receive a special blessing from the Lord in this country of Judea. In order to find food for herself and Naomi, Ruth went out to the barley field. For in those days, it was the custom of Hebrew landowners to leave some stalks of grain for the poor people to gather. Now the field where Ruth gathered grain was one belonging to a man named Boaz. And when he came out to his field and saw her there, he asked his overseer about her. Who is this young woman? She's the one who came back with Naomi from Moab. She said, please let me gather grain from the sheaves. She's been working from early morning until now. Ruth had seen Boaz at the edge of the field and had decided who he was because of his fine clothes and the way he spoke with the overseer. Now Boaz walked over to her. Don't go and gather grain in any other field. You may stay in this one. Stay with my women workers. And when you are thirsty, go to the water jars and drink. Why are you so kind to me, a foreigner? I've heard of all you've done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your mother and your father in the country where you were born and came to a people you did not know. May the Lord reward you for what you've done. May the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for shelter, fully repay you. You are most kind, my Lord, for you have helped me, even though I'm not one of your servants. From the moment of her meeting with Boaz, Ruth was treated with great kindness. At noon, she was invited to sit with the workers and was given all the food she wanted. And Boaz even gave orders to his workers to pull out some stalks from the bundles so that there would be plenty of barley for Ruth to gather. By the end of the day, she had gathered almost a bushel of grain, enough food for many days. That evening, when Ruth came home, she told Naomi all that had happened, how the owner of the field had been kind to her. And when Naomi heard that it was Boaz, she was very pleased. Oh, may the Lord bless Boaz for his kindness. The man is a close relative who may help us. Oh, then he also said to me, you may stay near my servants until they have harvested all my grain. It is well, my daughter. So Naomi encouraged Ruth to go to the fields belonging to Boaz. Ruth faithfully worked in the fields every day, and every evening she brought home a good supply of grain to her mother-in-law. At the end of the harvest season, Naomi's thoughts turned to the future of her loyal, unselfish daughter-in-law. My daughter, should I not try to find a good home for you? Is not Boaz, with whose servants you have been working, a relative? Tonight he threshes barley on the threshing floor. Wash and anoint yourself and put on your best clothes and go down to the threshing floor and see Boaz. From the kindness that Boaz had shown to Ruth, Naomi knew that he respected and admired her. Now Naomi felt that the time had come for Ruth to tell him that he was a close relative. For according to the Hebrew law, the closest male relative was to take care of the widows. Following Naomi's suggestion, Ruth went to Boaz, asking him to take care of her because he was her relative. 
and Boaz was quick to answer her. Have no fear. I'll do all that you ask, for everyone knows you're a good woman. It's true, I am a close relative, but there's a relative who's closer than I. If he will help you, well, let him do it. But if he isn't willing, then as the Lord lives, I will gladly do it with my whole heart. In this way, Boaz promised Ruth that if the man who was her closest relative would not marry her, he wanted her to be his wife. Then Boaz gave Ruth a gift of grain for Naomi to show that he also intended to take care of her. And Ruth hurried home to tell Naomi all that Boaz had said. The next day, Boaz lost no time in meeting with Naomi's closer relative. And according to the custom of the day, he asked 10 elders of the city to be present at their meeting. Naomi has come back from Moab and is selling the land that belonged to our relative, Elimelech. I thought I would tell you about it and say, buy it in the presence of the elders of my people. If you want it, take it. But if you do not, then tell me, since after you, I am her closest relative. I will buy it. But if you buy the land from Naomi, you must also take Ruth, the Moabite woman, as your wife, so that her children may inherit the land. No wonder the other close relative hesitated. If he married this Moabite woman and a son were born, the property would go to that son and not to his own children. So the man who was the nearest relative decided what to do. I can't buy it for myself without hurting my own inheritance. You may have it. Then the man took off his sandal and gave it to Boaz to show that Boaz had the right to buy the land and also to marry Ruth. In that way, the matter was legally settled. So Boaz married Ruth and also took Naomi into his home. In the course of time, a son was born to Ruth and Boaz. And it was Naomi's privilege and joy to help take care of the child. Now God has given me another son. Blessed be the Lord, who has not left you without a son. May his name be famous in Israel. He will renew your life and bring you happiness in your old age. For he is the child of your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons. Ruth had indeed been as much of a help and comfort to Naomi as many sons would have been. And Ruth was richly rewarded, also in a spiritual way that only the future would reveal. For the child in her arms, named Obed, would one day have a son of his own, named Jesse, who would be the father of the great King David, the ancestor of the Messiah.